Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? today i mean we're still in search of new th- new sounds for a new theme song um so it's still a new era we're in search of new sounds all that yada yada business but we're gonna take a break from our normal composition things i like to go off on tangents sometimes just because i get inspired and i like to mess around with things and recently what i discovered was that i could visualize the ports or the inputs and outputs of individual instruments or blocks within the old school reactor blocks, you know, format. And I could visualize those ports in a front facing way that allows me to patch them together on the front panel, uh, of the block instrument. Um, you know, just like the new sort of reactor blocks can do. So what I'd like to do today is actually show you how we can patch together a brand new instrument. And I'm going to go into edit. I'm sure what this is is probably the last uh, instrument that I was working on. Um, but, you know, what you'll notice if you go into patch is that it will load the, the you know, kind of the brand new reactor blocks interface and that's all well and good but what we want to do is we want to be able to um you know load our own uh you know our own blocks ensembles if you will and and be able to use them in a way that we can use them with old blocks as well as the new reactor blocks from like toy box and Euro react and the the guys that can do front facing patching so what i recommend if you would like to create a uh hyper you know virtual freaking alternate reality uh blocks ensemble i would recommend you create a new template and i just called it new blocks ensemble you can call it whatever you want but I pulled in the essentials, and as you can see, they are the front-facing patching uh, types of blocks, and that is what's going to allow me to patch together, uh, you know, various um, instruments or or blocks themselves once I pull those in here. Uh, Now, when working with the old-school reactor blocks, <clears throat> I call it old-school, but this is the way reactor has been, you know, for the longest time since reactor 6's release, since reactor blocks's release, you weren't able to do, like, hit the enter key here in the front panel and do searching or browsing for various instruments, so you just kind of have to get used to the fact that you're going to be using the the browser, you know, the way that you normally would. So I have everything organized in my community folder, and I'm just going to open it up. Reactor blocks, instruments. Okay, and then I have a folder specifically for 6.3 blocks. And I have created a few of these for the purposes of showing you, you know, what the possibilities are. So let me just drag one of these in here. And we'll take a look at one of my favorite oscillators from a creator by the name of Jonathan Tremblay, also goes by the name of Sinite Audio. And this, my friends, is the NHT oscillator. Now, if you go back and look at some of the older episodes, uh, this is not a new oscillator. I've gone over this before, but the beauty here is that what I've done <laughs> is I've set it up 
so that we can do front-facing patching. And that if we want, we can view the, uh, you know, A and B side of each of these instruments that kind of hides the uh, patch cables, if you will. But, um, you know, what we can do is, you know, this particular block is a block from the, uh, directly from the developer, and I can show you, uh, you know, where you can go uh, download those. I'll provide a link in the, uh, in the bio for where you can go download this, um, this particular block or this instrument. Um, but what I've done here, as you can see, is I've set up all the inputs and all the outputs so that we can use this uh, in a traditional front-facing patching sort of a way. And what this does is this adds the wires here on the uh, you know, not the panel view, but um, this uh, this view here down below. So within the panel view, we can do front-facing patching. And we can do this on old blocks. And I'll show you how we can do this on old blocks and how we can save those blocks to a library like I have here for what I call 6.3 blocks or blocks that I have set up to behave like the brand new reactor blocks. And that is to show these ports uh, within the, uh, you know, within the panel browser here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> if I click on the port and I go port properties, then what you'll see is either the info or the view tab will come up, but within the view, what I have is on the A side of the block, which matches, you know, on the uh, on the A side of uh, you know the regular reactor blocks. It's not visible, right? So you see the visible part of the view is set to off. You know, the on uh, switch is set to off, but on the B side, it's set to on. Right, And so what you can do for the old reactor blocks is you can set the B side to on. And then you can set this particular block or this instrument to either show A or show B. So you can hide that. So once you set all the ports up in a section that looks okay for you, you can either show or hide that just like you can with the normal reactor blocks. So this is amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So in today's episode, we're going to go through how to build essentially and dive into creating one of these instruments, uh, one of these blocks and showing all of these ports. And then in some of the upcoming episodes, it's a tangent, we're going to go and have some fun with these. So let's pull up one of the ones I know is not currently set up. Uh, so I know for a fact there's a beautiful filter, uh, or not filter, I think it's, uh, sorry, not a filter, a reverb, a beautiful reverb that this guy makes that is not currently set up. And there was something else. So let's go look for those. So I have a Cyanide Audio folder. Um, again, the builder name, uh, is Jonathan Tremblay. This is his, uh, his company name, Sinai Audio. And, um, what, uh, what I'm looking for is the mini verb. So, uh, let me pull in the mini verb. Here we go. And essentially what we want to do is we want to add ports to this that show here on the front panel so that we can set up wires from the front panel without having to show the structure view. So um, to show these ports on the front panel, uh, what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to go into 
uh, basically the structure view. We're going to look at this block or this instrument, and I'm just right-clicking on the port or uh, just the port dot itself or the name. Either one should work. Clicking somewhere else, I don't know how well that works, but it depends on how far away from it. But I just click on that dot or the name. You ought to be able to aim in either one of those two spots, and that should work. And go to Port Properties. And then the view comes up. And I do this on the B view because in the A view, as I said, of all of these instruments, you can view A and it hides those ports. Or you can view B and it can hide those ports. So for the ones that I want to set up, I want to do the same thing. You can view A and hide those or view B and show them. So I want to show these on the B view. So what that means is I click on the port, go to Port Properties. And not on the A view, I want to leave that set to off, but on the B view, I show this. And I'm going to go ahead and show the B view of the mini verb so that you can see what happens here. So let me show this. And then you see very faintly, there's a port that comes up. And I say it's very faint because there's no port image or any shadowing or anything that comes up here. So I like to add the port image that I found, and I did some research to find this. But if you go to image here for style in the style section, there's none in the image field currently. And if you scroll down, set it to port panel dark. Okay, and that's it. Here's your port. Boom. So I can go out from this oscillator and into the reverb. And there it is. Reverb is sounding off. And we have a wire here in the structure view. And this is based on this wire I just created for this port I just created. But that's not an ideal position for the port. I don't like that. And so you find, oh, I can't move it. So this is where you get into like a you know building scenario for reactor blocks. Now we're going to get into building. So... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to unlock the panel so that we can change the structure of the panel because we get to do that. It's software. It's not hardware, so we can easily do this. So I'm going to basically take this port and just move it out to the side. And we have tons of gray space over here that we can create, and I like the way it looks over here by itself. So basically, I'm going to leave this unlocked, and I'm going to get into a flow state here, where I'm going to click on the next port. So I've already done in left. That's here. I'm going to go in right. Port properties on the B tab. Verify that I'm here. Should already be here. This is where I'm working. It should default to this. That's fine. That's flow state time. So I won't do much talking here. I'm just going to repeat this process for all the ports and move them into position. And I found just in doing this a few times that I can pretty easily fit about seven ports across the standard, you know, sort of length of the reactor blocks, right? So one, two, three, f one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can go about seven down in that fashion. And that will allow me to go ahead and set all these up. So sometimes I run into sizing issues. It's interesting that the label for that is size. But I don't want any part of the label covered up or obscured as much as possible. I like to be able to read it. So uh, I may reposition those from time to time so that I can support a nice visualization. And so I'm just going to set all of these up. Get all these moved into position.
Okay. So that's seven. Now. So I'm going to kind of spread them out. Make them a little... Just give them a little space to work with within the panel so it's a little more optimal. Kind of match what I have going on in some of the others here. Well, that's about as low as I can go there. That's it. I can go a touch higher on that one. So that's okay. That's spread out there. So low CV is the last input one I could fit there. So that's where I left off. And now I'm just going to go high CV and continue on. And just position them off to the side. So these are all the inputs. These are its, its brethren, so to speak. So, well, I mean, they all serve the same purpose in terms of the flow of information or the flow of uh, music, the flow of data is coming into these inputs, and then there's a series of outputs. So these are all still the inputs on the left side of the structure view, as you can see. And then we have our two outputs. So it looks like I can easily position those towards the bottom of this column that I've been working towards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Sometimes I have to double take and make sure I'm kind of somewhat lined up. It looks all right to me. It may not be perfect, but it's... Uh, good enough that will work and then that is the mini verb completely set up for reactor blocks now I can lock the panel down and now this is uh, completely set up with inputs and outputs now I want to save this so that I can recall this instrument in this format because the this is not the format that I will have downloaded this. This is not the format that the creator put it out. This is just the format I, you know, I'm choosing to kind of work with it in uh, for the purposes of, um, you know, this, this endeavor. So uh, what I want to do is, first off, I want to make sure there's no sizing issues. Looks like there's a brief... Sizing issues. Want to make sure we can clear it up. Looks strange. Just slightly. Let's see if we can move these up just a little bit. See if that helps. That helps. That's it. That was it. So that helps line everything up. I just want to make sure we're kind of still the same size as our normal reactor blocks. It looks all the same, mostly. It might be a little off, hopefully not. But what I was getting to is you want to save this. So I can view A and hide those ports. I can view B and show those ports now. And what I want to do now is I want to um, save this as a 6.3 uh, capable block. So I have a folder already. Um, for all the blocks I've been uh, working through for this particular collection. And uh, like I said, I love this reverb. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And there we have it. Now anytime I look this back up in my uh, 6.3 blocks folder, here we have, I see I can remove this mini verb. And then I can add it back. And here we have it. We have all of our ports ready to go. So um, that's what I wanted to go through on this particular episode. Uh, not actually any uh, sound in this episode, but uh, essentially I wanted to uh, start seeing the possibilities of working with wires in the panel view and those creating wires in the structure view.
And on that note, until next time.